Coming up next on Hawaii Now, a University of Hawaii class in political theory invites Congressman Neil Abercrombie to speak on race and politics in the 2008 presidential campaign. It has to do with decades of hope, decades of frustration, decades in which people said, when are we going to become who we say we are? He offers a unique perspective. In 1959, he arrived in Honolulu from Buffalo, New York, to enroll as a graduate student at the University of Hawaii Manoa, soon after Hawaii won statehood. It was a time when he would meet and begin a long friendship with two fellow students, the parents-to-be of President-elect Barack Obama. On February 19, 2008, the congressman was invited to UH to reflect on that friendship and to discuss how Barack Obama's Hawaii roots were helping to change the dynamics of race and politics in the United States. That's coming up on Hawaii Now with Congressman Neil Abercrombie. I'd like to start uh, with uh, uh, pre-Obama. Uh, and by I mean pre-Obama, not Senator Obama today, but uh, Barack Obama Sr., uh, who came to the University of Hawaii soon after statehood in 1959. One of the interesting factoids that might come out of this election is that 50 years after the uh, advent of Hawaii as the 50th state, the last state to come into the Union, uh, that same year it's possible that uh, a boy born after uh, statehood uh, would become president of the United States. A boy bo born after statehood in Hawaii might become president of the United States. But there are antecedents to all that. There's a history to all of that. When we came to the proposition of race in this uh, world and how it affected us politically, I want you to try and cast your minds back, cast your emotions back, not from today. Go with me back into the last century. Go back with me to the time of statehood in 1959 when I arrived. In the first week of September, two weeks after the advent of statehood in, in the middle of August, August 17th in 1959, and Hawaii became the first state, uh, the 50th state rather the last state to enter the Union. Part of the element of discussion that took place then and why Hawaii was paired with Alaska coming into the Union was because of the racial composition or presumed racial composition of Hawaii. It was seen as a threat. Believe me, look around this room. The physiognomy of this room is such that it would have been impossible to imagine a classroom configured such as this is today, 50 years ago. Cast your mind back only 50 years and picture a young man coming to the University of Hawaii. Brilliant smile. A black man, impressive, charismatic, compelling personality, certain of himself. From where? Kenya. What's Kenya? Kenya is a country at this time barely shut of its colonial past. A rebellion had taken place. A revolution had taken place. A bloody rebellion characterized in the West as the Mau Mau Rebellion. A word that still exists that you can still find now when you Mau Mau somebody. What does that mean? Tom Wolfe wrote a, a, a story once using Mau Mauing during the civil rights movement that I'm going to get to in a, in, in a moment, when you mau mau somebody, that meant you confronted them. That meant that you, you bullied them. That meant you intimidated them. This came from, from the, the bloody revolution in Kenya against the British colonial and the British Empire and the British colonial administration. So picture this. Uh, young man, your own age. A product of that. So his father, a goat herd. This young man spotted by the colonial administration as a particularly bright young man. They weren't looking for bright young women. The whole colonial administration didn't want that. Oh no, this is still a patriarchy. This is still a hierarchy of colonial administration and empire. Spot this young man. Let's get him some schooling. He can be an administrator for us. Let's pick the best and the brightest 
out of these colonially dominated regions of the world and bring them into the orbit of, of colonial organization. And so they spot him. And in those days, the United States had as its foreign policy precepts that we would reach out to people. We had libraries. This may strike you as completely strange, but the United States in those days actually tried to set libraries up with books that people could come into freely and, uh, and uh, take them out or do what they wanted. We had scholarships for young men and women to be able to come to the United States, go to any school they wanted, any place they wanted, any way they wanted to do it, as opposed to, as opposed to today when, of course, we show our fist to the world where we threaten everybody with military intervention and slaughter and, and mayhem as the first order of our approach to other people in the world. In those days, instead, we reached out to people in that manner. And as a result of that, this young man, Barack Obama, was attracted into that orbit of, of influence and decided he would apply for a scholarship and was awarded it and ended up here at the University of Hawaii as the first stop on his intellectual journey. And so we met then. He came here, and of course it was easy in those days, still is. The campus isn't that much larger, and physically it's not at all. And it was easy to meet people. You'd see them, uh, hello, how are you? Uh, let's get together, would you like to sit down? You know, it was aloha spirit. It was, you know, obviously this person's a stranger. He's come from someplace else, uh, as I had. I came from the East Coast. I had at that time, so by way of a, a, a full disclosure, I had a, a, teaching, assistance, a teaching assistantship in the, in the uh, sociology department, which I think was given to me principally because I came from the East Coast and they wanted some cross-fertilization. It had nothing to do with my scholarly abilities. Um, uh, th they came later. Uh, but uh, uh, they were taking a chance and they wanted it. And so we met and, the, and others met and we talked. And here was this incredibly interesting man. Young man, as I say, with the, I still remember this brilliant smile, big horn rim glasses on, a big booming James Earl Jones voice, uh, full of, uh, of, of confidence. And, and of course, uh, some of us were graduate students, and so we knew everything, and we, we were anxious for everybody else to know that we knew everything. And, and so uh, uh, we met and talked, and there was this incredible fervor. Now, think about it. This is 50 years ago. The world is exploding in freedom. One nation after another, regions of the world, seeking independence, uh, trying to make their own futures, wanting control over their own destinies. And at the same time, we have the beginning of the civil rights, uh, I shouldn't say the beginning of the civil rights movement, because that had obviously gone on from slavery, but the modern, the modern manifestation of the civil rights movement. And this ferment was, un was undertaken. And of course, it was going on in Hawaii. That's when you see all this stuff about the 442nd and you wonder, well, what about all the, how, how many times are we going to have award ceremonies for the 100th Battalion and the 442nd and what did it all mean? It meant that, that those who had come here from elsewhere and those who were still here, who were not white, who were not Western, who were not uh, a Christian, uh, who had come here as, as missionaries, not just religious missionaries, but economic missionaries also, had come to dominate the Hawaiian territory. We'd gone from being a pre-feudal kingdom to a shotgun republic to a territory of the United States to becoming a, a state in, of the Union. All kinds of implications economically for sure and land tenure for sure, but particularly uh, implications and consequences for the races and the ethnicities and the, and the cultural groups that were melding here in Hawaii that were sometimes clashing, sometimes being in conflict with one another, but more often than not, having to live and work with one another in an island context. And in the course of events, obviously, intermarriage and, and children being born and relationships being established, economic and social and personal, all taking place in a, in a confined area uh, with these small islands in the middle of the Pacific, 2,500 miles from elsewhere. So the question of civil rights the question of racial identity was in ferment all around the world, including Hawaii. And in that context, Barack Obama appears.